Hello everyone, Ryan here. So, Paper Girls Volume 2 and Volume 3 read these graphic novels mentioned in my August wrap-up. And I'm going to try to keep this as spoiler-free as possible, although I, I think it's going to be hard. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to try. Um, there, there might be like two or three spoilers. So, I don't know, sorry. So, I mean, anyways, uh, Volume 2 picks up right where Volume 1 left off. Uh, and what it is, of course, the same group of girls uh, who are these, like, paper girls, you know, paper, they deliver the newspaper. And it's supposed to take place some time in, well, in Volume 1, it takes place in 1988, or 86, somewhere around there, in the 80s, in the mid to late 80s, so, and all this weird stuff happens, and they encounter these uh, teenagers who say that they're from the future, like from some point so far into the future that uh, it doesn't even, it's, it's kind of like uh, the year in which they say that they're from. It's supposed to be like, because it's not like they don't continue on. Like they don't say like, you know, oh, we're from the year 300,000 or something. To, to them, it's like kind of like everything starts over. So, I mean, the future that the future teenagers are from. So to them, it's like they're from year 13 or something like that. So, uh, so then the same, these group of girls... These paper girls, uh, eventually, somehow they're transported through time. And so in volume two, it starts where they they're, they get transported to the year 2016. And one of the girls, she meets her older self. And it takes some convincing, but then eventually, you know, her older self uh, agrees to help them figure out what's going on, and then also they're trying to find, uh, because one of the girls, she didn't get transported along with them, uh, the one girl by the name of, uh, <clears throat> that they refer to her as, uh, Cage, or KJ, or something like that, and so then, uh, along with, you know, this girl's older stuff, I believe the character's name is Aaron, so... The uh, young Aaron, I guess, and along with the older Aaron, middle-aged Aaron, well, almost middle-aged Aaron, and they go and try to figure out uh, what's going on, and they, at the same time, they figure out that uh, there's these like portals, kind of like I don't know. To me, they to me it seems more like there's there are these tears. In a space-time continuum, that's how how I was able to best understand what was going on as far as these portals were concerned. So these different tears in the space-time continuum were popping up in different places, and uh, you know the girls like they try to figure out you know where these different portals are going to lead them, and, uh, ultimately, no, I mean, that's pretty much the gist of Volume 2, because, <laughs> I mean, then, you know, they find out a whole bunch of other stuff, uh, I don't want to give it away, obviously, uh, but it was interesting, and then, so towards the end, then they get transported again, uh, either further into the future, or, into the past, or possibly so far into the future that they go into the past, <laughs> or something like that. It's not really explained because even, uh, you know, in Volume Three, you know, that's it, it looks like they get transported to some kind of possibly prehistoric era, or at least like sometime just after when, like the first. Groups of Homo sapiens were 
you know, uh, starting to develop tools and all that. And, you know, they were, you know, the whole hunter and gatherer thing was going on. And, um, but at the same time, then they still like developed their own language. And, uh, so yeah, the paper girls, they're transported to this particular point in time. Uh, and, uh, and now the said, they're reunited with the girl that the friend of theirs they were looking for, the one they call Cage, and, or KJ, or KG, or, or and, uh, because it turned out that, you know, she didn't go with them to 2016, she was transported to a different point in time, so they met up, eventually met up, and, you know, hooray, and, <laughs> Uh, and then also too, um, even though in volume three, it looks like they're in the past, uh, which they, they could be, they probably were or not. Uh, I mean, cause like I said, either they went so far into the future that everything just kind of started over or they actually did go into the past or, uh, um, but because of all these different portals opening up, uh, these different, I guess I want to say, like, pieces of technology have also, also like, started uh, coming through these portals and being, like, dropped, like, uh, so then you have, you know, these, these early tribes of people, uh, they were collecting, gathering, collecting, you know, these different, uh, I guess you could say, art, technically artifacts from the future. Uh, you know, because they, like, one woman, she uh, made a necklace out of different things. She found, like, uh, microchips and uh, stuff from, like, motherboards and, you know, a typical kind of computer hardware. And, uh, and that's, I guess, because of these different portals that keep kept opening up and these different pieces of technology, I guess computer parts were coming through the portals for whatever reason. <laughs> um, but then ultimately towards the end of volume three, things start to kind of st make sense. <laughs> Cause then there's this one female time traveler, uh, who she, she's supposed to be from some point in the future another point in the future and she shows up in this in this point in which the you know the girls the paper girls are there and they think they're in the past or something um but this one female time traveler she comes back into this same point and then she believes that she's actually the first time traveler ever uh which is not really made quite clear whether she is or she isn't, but ultimately, because, you know, she meets, you know, the girls who are there, and she's kind of disappointed because she thinks that, you know, I'm, oh, I'm actually, I'm not the first time traveler. <laughs> and, uh, the way I see it, I don't know, for me, like, I kind of feel like in the next volumes, um, other, other things are supposed to, transpire in which it all make a lot more sense <laughs> there I don't know that's what I <laughs> but I mean overall you know as far as like you know the story is really great really interesting um, I, I've I haven't really come across any other story quite like it I mean yeah I've read other graphic novels other other novels other books where uh, you know they have a time travel theme uh, most notably, I mean, for me, like when I was reading volume two, volume three, I was, I was reminded of different scenes of, uh, like, uh, back to the future. <laughs> Cause yeah, back to the future, uh, Doc Brown, I don't know, you know, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this, I don't know if you're familiar, you happen to be familiar with the trilogy back to the future. But I believe in part two, you know, 
when they actually go into the future, you know, it's supposed to be the year 2015, and Marty McFly, uh, he buys a sports almanac, and then he, um, you know, leaves it because Doc Brown tells him, you know, you can't mess with, you know, future information. Because Marty wanted to go back into the past, place a bunch of bets, and get rich, and Doc Brown wouldn't let him, so they left the almanac in some trash can. Uh, and then old Biff, older Biff, finds the almanac, and he kind of, he quote-unquote uh, borrows Doc Brown's time machine, <laughs> goes back into the 1950s, old Biff gives his younger self the sports almanac, and then goes back to the year 2015. Um, but then, of course, that's that's eventually it corrupts the whole timeline. It creates like a separate timeline, and like when because then when Doc Brown and Marty McFly go back to the year 1985, uh, it's a different reality, a different timeline, and that's because of the fact that old Biff, you know, he helped out his younger self in the 50s. And therefore, you know, young Biff, you know, he placed all these bets and he got rich. He became a multi-millionaire, I think even multi-billionaire. <laughs> so he became really filthy rich and uh, just became like the the ruler of, you know, the town, the city of Hill Valley. Um, essentially, what, I was, what I'm getting at with that is... That in Back to the Future, they mentioned, you know, alternate timelines that, you know, if you change something in the past, it'll, like, alter the timeline uh, that you happen to be used to. <laughs> but in this, in Paper Girls, there's one part where something is explained. Um, I won't give away too many details, but uh, it's explained where, like, it's supposed to be, like, at some point in the future... Scientists find out that the whole alternate timeline thing doesn't exist. For whatever reason, you know, they supposedly, they, they come upon some information that, which uh, they're able to prove that there's only one timeline and, and that's it. And, uh, and also too, that's, and that there's only one reality, one universe and, uh, but, you know, they, there's no further explanation other than that, just like, you know. And I don't know, for me, like, when I came across that in this, in Paper Girls, Volume 2 and Volume 3, uh, it kind of, like, made me think... It was, like, one of the main things I made me think about the most. Because <laughs> then also, again, that's why it made me think about Back to the Future, also other time travel movies, um like uh, the classic movie, The Time Machine, which is based on The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, which is an awesome book. If you haven't read The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, highly recommend it, definitely. Because, <laughs> I mean, that's what inspired a lot of other uh, time travel stories and also time travel movies. And so, um, but yeah, I don't know. For me, it's like... It, I you know I hope in in the next volumes of Paper Girls that whole you know that the whole there there's only one timeline thing I look, I I hope that's explained a little more <laughs> that's, yeah because for me that's I'll say that's the only thing I didn't like that it wasn't thoroughly explained it was just like you know I don't know but hey I mean you know technically yeah where where I am right now in reality where most of us are <laughs> that's theoretical so you know but it, it still makes for interesting thoughts thought processes and conversations <laughs> I don't know that's what I think so yeah I mean overall I, I give both volume 2 volume 3 uh, 4 out of 5 stars yeah I guess didn't quite like um, as much as Volume 1. Cool, because with Volume 1, I didn't know what to expect. I, I didn't think it was going to be an awesome time travel kind of story. So, 
But yeah, four out of five stars for both Volume 2 and Volume 3. And uh, that'll do it for my review of Paper Girls Volume 2 Volume 3. <laughs> yeah, let me know if you read this too, what you thought about it. So, yeah. And I, I highly recommend it, this series, to people who are into sci-fi like I am, uh, time travel stuff. <laughs> so, yeah. That's it. Uh, thanks for watching this. Thanks for listening, as always. Till next time, don't forget to keep it real. Keep on rocking. And peace.